I love origin stories. And at the beginning of our last discussion, I mentioned a madhouse, which my dictionary at least defines as a scene of extreme confusion or uproar. This was my summation of Scotland's political climate in recent years. Was I wrong about that? Well, my guest today is Kat Headley. Now, Kat is the Scottish Labour Party's candidate for Edinburgh Western. And like many of us, if you ask me, she's a product of the Madhouse. Having gone during the referendum campaign of 2014, as she puts it, from being interested in politics to being involved in politics. And in the wake of that campaign, how many of us find ourselves in that boat, I wonder? And did we ever really have a choice in being there? I mean, how intense do political tides have to become before we're swept out with them? Before we go from being interested to being involved, whether we like it or not? It's an interesting question. I immensely enjoyed our discussion, and that discussion is what follows. I hope you enjoy it. Now, before we begin, if you'd like to jump to a specific topic or question that I'm asking Kat, the time code for that will be in the description of this video. You can click on it, it's gonna take you right there. And if you like this video, please like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Kat Headley, you were running for elected office. Um, please summarize your platform and tell us a little about yourself. Well, maybe I'll talk about myself um, firstly, just to kind of introduce myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm quite new to politics. I got involved, um, like many people in the country, um, during the referendum. Mm -hmm. I had always been interested in politics, but not actively involved, and it was the referendum that really uh, propelled me um, forward to um, both, um, I guess, taking a bigger role, and also just to realising that perhaps I had something else to give. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a solicitor in my day job, um, and kind of my main focus is about helping people, um, making a difference, signing up to people who kind of abuse positions of power, mm -hmm. are neglectful, um, and that that's certainly something that drives me and that I would seek to do um, as an MSP. And um, yeah, so I've held a kind of elected positions in a variety of um, voluntary organisations um, over the last decade, and during the referendum became more involved with Better Together campaign, um, and uh, joined the Labour Party mm -hmm. and um, it's been a great experience for me. I, I think I remember a few years ago someone suggesting to me that I uh, you know, might be interested in running for office and I kind of I think I just laughed off and thought that, that was yeah. um, an implausible idea mm -hmm. um, but with the support and encouragement of many great people in and, and outside of the Labour Party um, put myself forward for selection and um, I've been a, a candidate now for almost two years mm -hmm. so it's been a long time but during that it's been great it's been really interesting to see the development of politics and the general debate in Scotland um, and this election is about it's really the culmination I think of a lot of those debates and it's you know Kay said last week that there's it's probably one of the most important elections that there's been in Scotland because mm -hmm. of the powers that the next government will have. Mm -hmm. Scottish Labour is going into this with a very bold and progressive platform to use those powers mm -hmm. to invest in education, to stop austerity and to make uh, Scotland the country that we all, whether you were yes or no in an independence referendum, want it to be. Yeah. I think we all in, in Scotland believe in great public services and great um, uh, um, public institutions and we if, but if we want that we have to pay for it and Scottish Labour is um, committed to, to doing that. Um, I've been really um, emboldened by the response that we've been getting on the doorsteps from people talking uh, when we talk about uh, our plan. Mm -hmm. People really understand that people get it. People understand that you know you don't have a decade of neglect or you know, an al you know almost a decade of neglect in relation to public services mm -hmm. and uh, without there being an impact on um, you, me, uh, our family, our friends, and um, you know, they, I think they're really excited about the idea that Scottish Labour might do something about that, particularly in the area of education. Yeah, absolutely. So you kind of became galvanised by politics during the referendum, which yeah. a lot of people did. Would you say that you were very politically active before that, or was this kind of a great opportunity to really uh, see politics at its best in a way, and at the same time, I guess, as it, at its worst, because it was very divisive? I think I was, I was a small p political mm -hmm. um, before the referendum. Mm -hmm. um, interested, like I said, but not, not involved. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was suddenly the, rea the realisation that um, something so big could happen that would be irreversible, that something that I didn't agree with, didn't want, didn't think it was in the best interest of the people of Scotland and felt compelled to, to do something about it. 
So I first got involved when it was a, a year to go um, to the referendum. I think it was uh, almost exactly uh, uh, one year to go, and I went to uh, a street stall. No, uh, sorry, a stall at Broughton High School for a community fair for Better Together. I'd never handed out a leaflet, I'd never been on a stall before, um, never been a member of a party, um, but walked along one cold September morning mm-hmm. and it kind of changed my life. Yeah. Um, and the people that were there, the discussions that we had, it was um, really exciting for me. Um, and everything kind of went from there. So, mm-hmm. But I think in... The thing about politics, I think, in, in Scotland is that there's a great openness for people. And if you want to get involved and uh, you're willing to put in the work, there's always a place for you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and I've done this myself as well. As soon as anyone offers um, some sort of uh, activity, some sort of energy, mm. you are absolutely grab them. So um, it's it's been a really exciting few years it's, you know it's been tough at times to balance all of yes. the various commitments um, work, I'm still working full time mm-hmm. for another kind of just over a week um, and balancing that and trying to maintain some semblance of a, a personal life see yes. friends um, very lucky that I've got a lot of friends who um, are, aren't involved in politics and they uh, keep me grounded. Let's you switch off as well. Absolutely, yeah. um, so that we can just mm-hmm. talk about other things. And uh, I'd really like to discuss, um, I think it's something that a lot of people in Scotland are wondering about, and maybe people in the UK generally, is I want to talk about your party. I mean, Labour are uh, a sort of force of nature in British politics for 100 years, and there is a, a narrative now, and I, I'd wonder how you feel about this narrative that says that basically in Scotland, for example, Labour are kind of going to be in a managed decline and the SNP are somehow going to become the main party. Do you think they have what it takes? Do you think that it's a it's an, an incorrect comparison to compare Labour and the SNP? Well, I think that um, there's, there's a number of different aspects mm-hmm. to your question. I'll try and address all of them. I think that um, one of the things that we're seeing right now is that the SNP are making the same mistakes that Scottish <laughs> Labour did when they were uh, in decades in power, complacency and arrogance. Um, And I think that it's starting to show. I mean, but it's complacency and arrogance without any boldness. Yes. There's, um, you know, the SNP right now are, um, have the vast majority of Westminster seats. They have an unexpected and unplanned majority at the Scottish Parliament and uh, you know Nicola Sturgeon is one of the most popular politicians according to polls, Mm -hmm. um, respected across all uh, parts of the political spectrum Mm -hmm. and if the polls are correct then they're going to solidify their position Um, and yet they don't, they aren't willing to act, they aren't willing to take the bold decisions and if they won't do it now then when would they? Yeah. What you know? What more security do they need to have in terms of their political position in order to do something bold, to do something brave, mm-hmm. to um, defy expectations? Mm-hmm. And if they weren't doing it now, then they never will. Yeah. And I think that's the, the thing about the SNP is that they are in it for power, power for power's sake. Mm-hmm. Um, so with the independence referendum when it comes to um, you know the, the white paper there were sections in the white paper that talked about um, well Scotland's the power to make its own decisions in relation to whatever area of policy but then when it came to it they said well actually we would just do things the same well, there were some areas of justice for example they would they said that they would just do the same thing as the rest of the United Kingdom because there was no inter- yeah. there was no need to change it so you have to wonder what what is the point of the powers and that, you know for the last decade mm-hmm. Nicholas Sturgeon has said that more powers meant less cuts. Mm -hmm. We now have the powers and yet she's not willing to stop the Mm -hmm. cuts. So for me I think that the the SNP are principally about power for power's sake Mm -hmm. and independence come what may no matter what and I think that because the SNP have always wanted independence and they wanted independence whether there was a a Labour government or a Tory government or a coalition government Mm -hmm. and they wanted it whether we were at times of war or times of peace and whether we've before, um, during and after oil booms is that for them independence is always the, is always the answer no matter the, the current context. So if that's all they're driving towards, which is a different goal than 
um, wanting to improve the lives and have a, more, a fairer, more just mm-hmm. um, country, then that's what they're going to be driving towards. Mm-hmm. Scottish Labour and the Labour Party generally in the United Kingdom is about that fairer and more just society mm-hmm. and about taking decisions that um, change lives and improve the prospects of the many and not the few. And that's that goes beyond borders and, and flags. Um, and it's about and it's trying to be about everyone and the the great progress that we've seen in society um, in this country over the last hundred years is due in a huge part, if not entirely down to the moves of the Labour Party and the, and mm-hmm. the broader Labour movement. So we're not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, we are in tough times, um, but Kezia Dugdale is the absolute right leader. You know, cometh the hour, cometh the woman. Um, I'm proud and um, so grateful for her leadership. She's um, been, she grows week in, week out in her role um, as a leader and um, as a, you know, a future first minister. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know. There's a there's a lot to be said in this debate, and um, you know we're going to keep Scottish Labour is not going anywhere. So absolutely, I mean, you said something very interesting, which is um, you talked about complacency. And do you think this is just a universal in politics that after a while, as you say, over the last century, uh, all the many positive reforms that have been brought through by Labour? Um, do you feel that this is just something that happens to parties and that is now happening with the SNP as well, you're saying? But do you think that you just go, you kind of ebb and flow, and Labour, as you've said, is in a tough time right now, but it's, it's, it's not this narrative that it's somehow to be written off north of the border yeah, in I mean, Scotland. I think that kind there's of always fallacious. going to be, there's always cycles in politics, there's always mm-hmm. ebbs and flows, there's always yeah. going to be a desire for change. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's good, that's what, mm-hmm. I guess, what democracy is about, mm-hmm. is the ability for party to come in um, from opposition to, to change things up mm-hmm. and then for them to be challenged um, and I guess it depends on how quickly that complacency and arrogance sets in and how long it takes for the opposition to mount a credible challenge. Now I think that that's what Labour is doing in this election. I hope it will be enough. I hope that we will have convinced Scotland that um, that we have done enough to um, change, to be bolder and to have a radical plan for government. Um, but if it's not to be this time round, then I'd be. Um, then this, that's not mm-hmm. um, going to be the, the end of the story by any means. But this is a, a, a process to um, to recovery, and I think that it won't be. Uh, we're not going to have to wait too long for um, a, a Scottish Labour um, first minister. We're switching gears a little bit, tens of billions of pounds that has been racked up under the Scottish National Party, including council area debts. I mean, how do you how do you feel about that generally? I mean, because there's social services on the other side, but do you think that they have excessively spent? Well, I think I think that you look at the the JERS figures as you know what the the the, the state of the, this kind of I guess the Scottish economy, yeah. but you know we're that it's not Scottish Scotland in isolation. It's mm-hmm. part of the United Kingdom. Yes, uh, you know that is what. For me, um, and many others, was the whole point of um, the Novo and keeping the United Kingdom yes. united was to pool and share our resources mm-hmm. so that at times such as now when mm-hmm. our offshore resources and, and revenue are um, you know, so low um, that we are able to rely then on um, resources from the great United Kingdom in order to maintain our public services. Mm-hmm. And I think that... Um, if you then look more kind of closely in relation to paying for um, what we spend, essentially, mm-hmm. is that Scottish Labour is going into this um, into this election talking about using the powers in order to um, to invest in public services and to stop the cuts that are you know coming from London and just being passed on um, by the SNP. Mm-hmm. So. We, I think that the Scottish Labour's approach to this is actually very responsible because we're not we're not advocating a um, tax less, spend more, um, you know, economy. We're saying that we want to take responsible um, but bold decisions that says that we in Scotland want to have better um, public services and that we're willing to pay for them. And um, I think you know there has been a. Um, 
you know, there, you know, there have been times. This must be the, the first election in a long time that Scottish Labour's gone into an election saying that we're going to raise income tax. Yes. Um, but I think that if there is a time to do that, that is now, mm-hmm. um, because of the level of debate, the level of engagement we've had about these issues uh-huh. with um, the voting public, yeah. and I think that people appreciate no, more now, perhaps, than they did mm-hmm. that. Um, you don't get something for nothing. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I have another question, uh, and it sort of relates to the the the, the spending deficits we were just talking about. And um, I'm a student at Edinburgh College. Our cameraman Kuda is a student at Edinburgh College. Uh, we're in our last year of HND. And the reason I asked the question not only about the jurors' figures on their own, uh, but there was a, a sort of um, general strike across the whole country organised about a month ago. Uh, by the EIS, uh, the Educational Institute for Scotland, um, for pay, and not only pay but also conditions, um, because since these merger programs have happened with very various city colleges here and in Glasgow and most of the other cities, uh, one of the colleges in Glasgow has had, I think, a 50% drop in the number of students there. And when I spoke to a lot of people outside Parliament about a month ago, um, a lot of them said, well, you know, Further education is being cut so as to keep higher education free, yeah. and it's a sort of cynical move where you're taking some some of the some of the money from somewhere else because one is a more um, recognised topic. If you were gonna or or policy, if you were gonna have quiz people on the street, they'd know yeah. about the free uni. But you sort of quietly take that money and starve yeah. further education. I mean, yeah. What's your take on that? This in light of these jurors' figures. Well, yeah. I think that you know, Kezia Dugdale has put mm-hmm. um, education at the heart mm-hmm. of um, not only her politics but the Scottish Labour agenda mm-hmm. and this election. I have to say, and you know, it was it was uh, Kezia that took up the the issue of college cuts in this country um, when no one else was talking about it. So I think that um, Scottish Labour has is committed to investing investing in further education, um, both in terms of the important role it has for young people, but also for lifelong learning. And to just today, um, Scottish Labour announced that we would um, return um, student bursary funding to its, I think, 2012-2013 levels, reverse the cuts that have been happening uh, under the SNP's watch to these bursaries to assist um, those that want to go into education to get into education. Because, um, you know, tuition is free in this country, Mm -hmm. but higher education most certainly isn't. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I was just um, looking today um, at, uh, you know, I've got my P60 for my end of year um, tax statement from my employer. It says how much I've repaid this year Mm -hmm. in terms of my student loans. Now, um, I went to university and I wouldn't change it for a second, Mm -hmm. but I've still probably got about two or three years of paying back student loans, and that's a significant chunk of um, my um, of my monthly earnings. Mm-hmm. And you know that has an implications for a variety of different things, and you know for uh, for other people, um, you know young people who are have got student debt, which again has um, ballooned under mm-hmm. um, the SNP and the, their two administrations. That um, you know, it has implications for all sorts of things, um, not least of all, you know, getting on the housing ladder, for example. So, I think that um, we need to um, we need to again have these honest conversations about how we fund um, the kind of society that we want. And Scottish Labour is absolutely doing that and willing to make commitments which are backed up by the pro- by the bold commitment to um, yes uh, raise. Um, Income tax, mm-hmm. but that the, the worst, the, those who are um, earning the least in society mm-hmm. won't be paying any more mm-hmm. than they are right now. Um, but in order to make, um, you know, the, the big investment that we want mm-hmm. to. Oh, well, I'm sure there'll be a great many people that are glad to hear that. I mean, uh, Alex Colhamlin, as well as yourself, was very concerned about that, so it's, yeah. it's good to hear. You mentioned at the beginning of our conversation that you know you become galvanised by the referendum. Um, and I think, as you put it, you went from being interested in politics to involved in politics. Yeah. So I thought it was a very good way of putting it. In the wake of the referendum, do you feel Scotland's a more divided country? And, and what are the implications of that? And how do, you, how do we fix that problem? Um, and I may add the statistic that I think one in four people, according to Alex Colhamlin, who we interviewed last week, have a sort of permanent division, either within their friends or their family, either over the dinner table or over social media or in the yeah. pub. Uh, maybe those voids are mended in the future, but it's certainly... 
a, a huge issue in the wake of what was very positive, but maybe that's negative aspects of the referendum. I think that um, I think that for I think that Scotland is, as a whole needs to move on from the independence referendum, and Agreed. a lot of that is about going to be like healing those divisions. Uh, I mean, I had. Um, um, animated discussions, shall we say, with yes. um, friends and family about, about the issue about the, during the referendum and particularly in the final weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, my my dad was a, a yes voter. Um, my mum was a, a no voter and came out campaigning with me. Um, but they are both now um, a members of the, the Labour Party, mm-hmm. as is my stepdad, mm-hmm. and, uh, and but and all three of them co- will come out and mm-hmm. help me um, campaign during during this election. <laughs> so there are, um, I, I think that when people are passionate about something, you know, there is always going to be um, differences of opinion, um, mm-hmm. and some of those are held a little bit more strongly than others. But I think that we can, we need to, to, we need to move on from it. And I think that that's what's, you know, um, the SNP are, are, are trying to ride two horses in this election where they say, well, it's not about independence, but, you know, once the election's over, we'll be building towards, um, you know, persuading the public that they were wrong and mm-hmm. that they need to back independence. So, Again. and, they, and yeah. you know. And the Conservative Party spend all of their time talking uh-huh. about, um, ha- the, you know, the fear of another election, but uh, another uh, referendum. But um, at the same time, talking about another referendum. Yeah. Scottish Labour wants to move on, mm-hmm. use the powers, and make Scotland a better mm-hmm. country. Um, and that I think, if once we do that, mm-hmm. um, we can perhaps move on from this mm-hmm. issue and, and leave it, you know, divide it. Unfortunately, I think there's going to be people on both sides mm-hmm. who are so animated by this issue that um, for them the healing of those mm-hmm. wounds is never going to really happen um, but I think that with time you know time's a great mm-hmm. healer so mm-hmm. you know there was unpleasantness before mm-hmm. there continues to be unpleasantness now I think it's a, it's a vast mi- minority mm-hmm. um, and that for the vast majority of those people mm-hmm. they are um, you know they are active on the internet. They're mm-hmm. keyboard warriors, and yes. they are um, people who are very happy to get angry when they're hiding behind an egg or mm. a pseudonym. And you've received um, flack yourself. On oh social yeah, but media. you know yeah. the mute button seems is to be a theme. A, yeah, gr- you know, is a gift from mm. God. Um, yeah. And uh, because um, they don't get the thrill of uh, or the joy of being blocked, that mm-hmm. sort of you know, mm-hmm. as both for the modern era. Yeah. Um, but you just mute them and then they shout into the ether. So mm-hmm. it's um, uh, mm-hmm. you know. So it, your take on the idea of a second referendum is it's a little bit like um, it's sort of Trumpian. It, people only believe in it because people believe in it. That it's going to happen, they're concerned, so they make it a reality. So you say the Conservative yeah, Party in I Scotland say they're worried about it, and a bit like Donald Trump, you only give them power by talking about them, and keeping oh, them in the well, press. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. so. I mean, I think that um, you know the, the Kez said, you mm-hmm. know, when Nicola, uh, sorry, when actually Nicola Ruth, I mean mm-hmm. Ruth has been um, Davidson has been t- um, talking about how the Conservatives are the only strong opposition. I, the, for mm-hmm. apart from on the in- issue of independence, mm-hmm. I think that all we've heard, heard, heard um, Ruth Davidson say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that the, C- the Conservative Party um, support the SNP's mm-hmm. position on relation to um, the biggest issue in this, which is tax? Right. Um, yeah. So you know, Ruth Davidson um, has been challenging Kay's in relation to her commitment to the union, and as Kay said, you don't need to sit on a tank mm-hmm. and wave a flag in order to be committed to the United Kingdom yeah. and the benefits that it has to Scotland. I do love that picture. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, Ruth's very good at stunts and photo ops, mm-hmm. but. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's more to elections mm-hmm. than that. Well, I mean, speaking of elections, I mean, the upcoming election and the EU referendum in June, people have gone to the polls, what, 10 times since 2007. Yeah. Um, do you, th- I mean, we could list them off, but I mean, we've had, this will be the third referendum in 10 yeah. years. Um, it'll be the third referendum, I think, in five years, actually, when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, 2011, yeah. 2014, yes. 2016. Yeah. Um, do you think we have voting fatigue as a country, more so, slightly more so than the rest of the UK, because of the amount of uh, political energy that the referendum, the referendum, took out of us? I think that um, the referendum got a huge. You know, the, the voter turnout was mm-hmm. 
spectacular and you could sit on a bus and you would hear people talking about yes. fiscal deficits or you know um, reserved powers mm. and things like this and I think that's a great thing mm -hmm. um, but what people want to believe in in terms of politics when they get engaged is that actually things can change and things do change mm -hmm. and that their participation in the political process isn't meaningless mm -hmm. and that their vote isn't meaningless mm -hmm. um, and I think that we have the power in this election to, to prove to everyone that their vote does mean something, you can have change and that you it can make a difference. The political process of having a referendum, a debate about Scotland's constitutional future, talking about um, further devolution, getting further devolution, mm -hmm. delivering on the vow, mm -hmm. um, can then mean something. Mm -hmm. and. That's what Scottish Labour wants to do. Mm. We want to prove to people that all of this, all of the photo ops, mm. all of the speeches, all of the press releases, mm. all of the time, all of the leaflets, that it means something, mm. it can make a difference, mm. and it, that difference can be felt by everyone. Mm. Because when Labour has been in government mm. and it has committed to bold and progressive change, mm. it has changed lives for the better. So I think that if we can take anything from, um, from what has happened is that it's a desire, particularly from the Scottish Labour Party, is to prove that that commitment to mm -hmm. democracy, that commitment to voting can yeah. make a difference. It would be a real shame and the disillusionment that I think that would happen mm -hmm. is if you just get more of the same, mm -hmm. you know, that you go to the voting booth and nothing ever changes. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I have to say that if the SNP get back in with a majority, I, mm. you know, I can't see that being anything other than the case. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm speaking mm. speaking to colleagues um, who are just like, is that you know another election? Mm -hmm. You know, um, another election. and uh, you know, I should say that's um, legal colleagues, not political colleagues. Yes. Although I think a lot of my political colleagues mm. probably think, yes, God, another election yeah. as well. Um, particularly those um, who are the, the real mm -hmm. the real grafters, who are the, the volunteers and the activists. It's trying to um, top, top up the number of grey hairs that they're going to add by uh, well, the end of Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, I'm a candidate, I put myself forward for mm -hmm. this, um, and there's, I'm quite happy about that, that's something I take mm -hmm. on, but the real, the, the real heroes out there mm -hmm. are the ones who are on you know, the doorsteps mm. in all weathers, week in, week out, mm. and don't get the kind of thanks or the sort of personal, you know, glory or mm. whatever that you might as a candidate. Mm -hmm. um, and they're the, they're the people who, who make all this work because without them, um, this this whole grind, this whole political machine would fall apart. I mean, I remember when I first got involved in politics, just having my eyes opened to how reliant the political process in this country is on just volunteers, people who just give a few hours mm -hmm. at the weekend or evenings or during the week, mm -hmm. who deliver leaflets mm -hmm. um, to you know their neighbours mm -hmm. or their streets. And maybe that's positive when you compare it to the American system, which yeah. has so much money in it I and mean, staffers. Just, and I mean, you know, you know. some parties, uh, you know, um, here in Edinburgh Western, I think mm -hmm. um, you're. Alex Cole Hamilton may have had a little bit more resource to mm -hmm. be able to distribute um, his his leaflets over the mm -hmm. last few months, um, but say uh, uh, you know there's you know there's undoubtedly people who will um, who are doing a great shift, mm -hmm. uh, and in times of also personal struggle as well, I've got you know a few people who come at, come out when they can despite you know personal illness and things like that, and I'm just in awe of them. Um, and that you know that spirit is alive across all parties, mm -hmm. and that's why I genuinely believe that most people who are involved in politics do so for the best of reasons, and that all that divides us mm -hmm. is a different approach or a different mm -hmm. idea of the outcome. Mm -hmm. it, but you know, for the most part, it's mm -hmm. they're there for the best of reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, something something I might kind of add an additional kind of appendage to that question. Um, you, you work in the law, you have a lot yeah. of friends who are in the law, and if you look at all of these elections and referendums, uh, and you look at the EU uh, this June, uh, it's sort of been a decade and a half of 
not just a question of which party is going to run which part of the country under yeah. which assemb you know, uh, assembly or parliament, um, but institutional questions which kind of relate very closely to the law of a country, that the way yeah. a country is designed and the way it's operated. And um, Britain generally, Scotland sort of benefited from being able to, to some extent, design a parliament from scratch, which was supposed to prevent overall control yeah. by one. But that failed apparently. But you know, um, with the proportional a aspect of the of the list, right in the regions. Yeah. But do you think that this piecemeal version of devolution that we have, not only here but in Wales as well, that this is going, unless we have a, a sort of concerted effort to redesign aspects of the way the country runs, I mean the Lords reform that, was, that failed last year, yeah. um, AV, uh, alternative voting, uh, back in 2011, I mean for you, what do you think needs to change most either in Scotland or in the UK for the whole country to sort of run a bit better? Because if you look at all those 10 votes, a lot of them were about uh, institutional big, or constitutional issues, questions, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, these big votes about, mm -hmm. um, I think, the, the, the big issues, mm -hmm. constitutional issues, mm -hmm. um, come about um, in a large part because people don't feel like they're being served by the current arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, so whether that's voting reform mm -hmm. or the makeup of the House of Lords or mm -hmm. whether that's um, you know devolution mm -hmm. in the 90s or whether it's um, the EU referendum mm -hmm. coming up um, it's because people that, that are calling for that change feel like they are ill served by the current mm -hmm. and I think again that comes back to what I was saying before is that people don't feel like they get the change that they want or mm -hmm. they see the change that they want to see um, through the the general um, kind of you know just voting in a in a standard election, mm -hmm. they feel that they need the wholesale change mm -hmm. in order to see any change. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is again a bit of a failure of I guess the everyday politics mm -hmm. is that people feel that they have to go for those big changes to see mm -hmm. any change um, or they have to grasp, go for um, something um, very disruptive. Yeah. Um, I mean there's a link between I think that and then the rise of populist parties. Mm -hmm. People don't feel like the nor you know, normal um, politicians, that they're all the same, mm -hmm. that they all lie, that they're all in it for themselves, then, you know, they'll say anything to get elected mm -hmm. and then they'll, you know, they're, they don't stick to their word, there's all about, mm -hmm. you know, they, um, they uh, govern, they, they uh, campaign in poetry mm -hmm. and govern in prose. Yeah. Um, and so they, they go for these, the, the, you know, parties or mm -hmm. people who are willing to just see see what people want to hear mm -hmm. um, and then some yeah um, and I think that with you know 24 hour media mm -hmm. social media and um, the the con you know people feeling more more isolated mm -hmm. than they have before but at the same time in a world which feels more connected than it Much ever more, has yeah. been is that um, there's a shift going on mm -hmm. in um, society and mm -hmm. democracies uh, around the world in terms of uh, where individuals sit in that process and having control over their own lives and when people don't feel that like they've got control over their own lives and don't feel that they have any power to change mm -hmm. their lives then they go for the extreme options they go for the trumps of this world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or the Farages of this mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. or, or the Corbyns of this world. I no, I wouldn't put him in that in that court, in that. Uh, um, no. Well, if people wanted to find out more about you online, yes. uh, it's been fantastic. Um, we want to we don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> Do you know, you've <laughs> got some campaigning it. today. Let's um, stay here. The pub's open till eleven. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, where, where would people find you online? So uh, Facebook, it's um, Katrina for mm -hmm. Western mm -hmm. um, on Facebook. Um, an active tweeter. It was actually mm -hmm. um, I probably should have mentioned that it's. it's it's not just the referendum; mm -hmm. it's Twitter that got me into politics. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. My experience obviously wasn't that bad that mm -hmm. it put me off. Um, so at cat underscore Headley, mm -hmm. and um, and either of those should be able to get contact details mm -hmm. for me. Um, and the e the ca the campaign email address mm -hmm. is a uh, cat campaign twenty sixteen at gmail.com. Cat campaign twenty sixteen at 
Yahoo. Gmail. 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 Don't want to confuse that last bit. People <laughs> will be lost. Thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate it. Not at all. Um, and the best pleasure. of luck in May. Thank you. Okay. Cheers.